I am Reverend Zach. I am Frank Sis. <laughs> The Hot Dog, a podcast where me and my brother over here, Francis, watch a bad movie, critically, financially, or otherwise, then we review it, break it down, and tell you what we think. No pussy footing around this week. We watched Double Dragon from 1994. I have a lot to say about this. And what's <laughs> interesting, 94? Really? <laughs> what? The game came out in, like, 86. <laughs> well, it's like the same thing with, with uh, Super Mario Brothers. It's like... It was like nobody believed that video games were really going to hang around, I guess. So we had to, like, we waited, like, a decade just to be like, oh, I guess people do like this. <laughs> yeah, because the game is awesome. <laughs> and this is so, like, I don't even, I, what, is, what is this? Something this, from another dimension? This movie, based off the video game series of the same name, which could not be less connected, <laughs> similar to the Mario Brothers movie, uh, just full disclosure, we did a Mario Brothers, a Super Mario Brothers episode, like what six months ago, uh, and I don't even know it, if it was that it, long ago. Yeah. It was a while ago, and it never recorded, and we lost the whole thing. I don't know. Doing this almost makes me want to go back and do it again. If anybody wants us to do that, say something in the comments. But anyway, this movie. Let's get let's get the standard shit out of the way. This is directed by a guy named James Ukich. One of my favorites. There you go. There's the same joke. Uh, it stars. <laughs> I even paused because I knew you were going to go for it. Right. It stars Mark Dacascos, Scott Wolf from Party of Five, Alyssa Milano from Who's the Boss, and a bunch of other shit, and Robert Patrick, who everybody knows is the Liquid Metal Terminator from Terminator Two. It had a budget of seven point eight million dollars. It only made two. It we, we, and I'm surprised it made that. This is like this is astonishingly awful. And the only people that went the two million dollars are from the people that were like in love with the game. Yeah, like <laughs> like little kids who right. or just people who grew up with an NES. Right, it was and ten I mean, years that, later, so you know they were like, oh, Double Dragon. Right, exactly. So, I mean, okay. So let's just get into it. I mean, we can do that. This is about. It, we're, we're in, like, China somewhere. somewhere it actually and, says that. Somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in China. An ancient Chinese king has created a magic medallion to save his kingdom. It was too powerful, so he split it in half. One half controls the body, the other half controls the soul, and, quote, This is the legend of the double dragon. No, it's not. <laughs> Maybe you haven't played the game. <laughs> That's not what the game's about at all. It's about two guys who know karate. <laughs> That's uh, we don't need anything else. Just guys that kick ass. <laughs> so, well, let's let's do that real quick. What the? Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Is not the plot of the game a man and a woman are standing on a street? Mm -hmm. A bad guy walks up, punches the woman in the stomach throws her over his shoulder and runs away, and now you, as Billy or Jimmy, have to fight bad guys till the end of the game and get your girlfriend back. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit more, but that's pretty much the basic premise, yeah. Yeah, th none of that is in this I kept movie. waiting for that to happen, and it never... And, yeah. Like, they don't even have a girlfriend! No, no. And they add all this, like, magic bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> so... Like, we're, somewhere in China, that was like the opening scroll with the, the medallion. Now we're now there's a bunch of ninjas Fighting monks. Killing, <laughs> killing a bunch of monks looking for one half of this medallion. I think which they're they looking for the whole thing. They think that the whole thing is going to be... Look, yeah, they're looking for the medallion. They find it in a cave. So, do they just, like, this woman gets on a phone and goes, we have it. Flash to... Los Angeles in the distant future of 2007. Seven years after the Great Quake. Which was, yeah, which was hit by a massive earthquake and is now, for some reason, an independent dystopian state that's no longer under the control of the federal government something. Yeah, and it's like, what, did they get no man's landed? <laughs> what? Well, what, like, why would that happen? Why? They never, like... Oh, well, after the Second Civil War, all the cities broke up into city-states. No, there's just like a big earthquake hit, and I guess the rest of America was like, well, fuck Los Angeles. 
And what? No, it's not L. What's the new name for it? It's called it's called New Angeles. Oh, or New something. Angeles. It's not even clever. Yeah, <laughs> it's called <laughs> New Angeles. So Robert Patrick, he's Robert Patrick's the bad guy. That's all we need to know. We cut to him. He's the bad guy. I love him. He, he what the f- Terminator Two was like. Two years ago, he should be riding high of this fame of being in one of the biggest movies of the 90s, as of so far, not even to mention the, all the 90s altogether. What the fuck is he doing in this piece of shit? I love his outfit. He, first of all, his hair is, <laughs> his hair is bleach blonde. He looks like he saw, a go- it looks like he's in a cartoon where he sees a ghost, and it sticks straight up, and it turns white. Because his hair is about nine inches tall, and is ble- he looks like Guile from Street Fighter. And he's wearing some weird sweater with a lot of zippers. Well, I don't know, even no, know how to like... He, he wears like these, like, from, okay, so from the neck to the bottom of the sleeves, it's like a normal jacket. <laughs> but then from the bottom of the sleeves down, it turns into like a wedding dress. Uh- <laughs> It's like this big, long, flowy robe, and he keeps doing this whole, like, well, the ancient Chinese warlords used to use this name back in the day, so now you can call me Shikataka Makatuku, or whatever his name is in this movie. I think he's Kogashuko. Kogashuko? It's like, (laughs) why is this guy so invested in Asian culture? Well, he just wants the double dragon... Yeah, but does that mean, like, he needs to adopt that, like, it, can't he just be like, I just want it for magic? <laughs> and I love how the bad guy knows no martial arts. <laughs> oh, the bad guy doesn't know martial arts? And a lot of the good guys don't know martial arts either. You know who knows martial arts? Mark Dacascos. That's it. <laughs> we'll get there. Oh. <laughs> so... They, the bad guys bring Robert Patrick the suitcase with the medallion in it because they're like, oh, we found the double dragon medallion. He's like, great, let's open it up. And it only has half the medallion in it, which you think they would know since the entire legend about this thing is that there are two halves of it. And the, and you, when you pick it up, when they're picking it up, you can clearly see like there's jagged edge where the other end oh, would yeah, have been. It's a half a circle with a puzzle piece in the center <laughs> where another half of a circle would click in. Yeah, they're like, and, like they, they picked it up and they were like, oh, it looks full to me. Well, like I said, not only that, the entire lore behind this thing is that there are two parts of it. <laughs> It, that's the only reason the story exists. And he's like, well, it's a good thing that the other half of this ancient medallion that can control the world happens to be six blocks away in the same American city that I'm in. Why are we even, Why did we watch this? You made me watch this one. <laughs> no, you picked it. Uh, I gave you a list of four movies. Okay, all right, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> so he he's mad. Used, no. Well, <laughs> yeah, this point. he's mad. He, has, <laughs> he uses his half of the medallion to become a cartoon. <laughs> he just turns into a cartoon shadow, and so, like, be prepared for him to be a cartoon for, like, 15% of the movie now. <laughs> so then we're going so to like, cut to... Okay, go ahead. No, yeah, he's basically just like, get me the other half of this medallion. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. cut to... Cut to the martial arts tournament. Or underground fight club something. Yes. Well, we're gonna get to meet Billy and Jimmy Lee. Uh, Jimmy Lee is uh, is played by Mark Dacascos. He is a fairly famous martial artist. He was in Brotherhood of the Wolf. He was actually the uh, the host personality for uh, the, that American Chef show, uh, Chef Warriors something on Food Network, where two chefs would fight with food something. He was on that, okay. uh, and. His, and he's he's a martial artist. He's known for it. Knows what he's doing. He's pretty, he knows what he's doing. His brother is played by the I don't know four eleven Scott Wolf, who is like who clearly can't do karate at all. Like not even a little bit. And the thing is, so Mark Dacascos is of Asian descent. Yep. Scott Wolf is a short Jewish man. <laughs> and they are now, they are twins. <laughs> Now, te- like typically, this wouldn't be a big point of contention. Pe- 
people have adopted siblings. In fact, you and I do. But the thing is, they say specifically that they are biological twins of the same age. Why are they two different races? <laughs> Just say they're adopted and you're done. Don't be like, oh, yeah, we're identical twins born of the same mother. Uh, he's Asian and I'm a tiny Jewish boy. <laughs> what? It is pretty apparent. <laughs> they don't look anything alike. Uh, but it's okay. That's shadowed by how bad the movie is. So they are. they have a surrogate mother who is played by Julia Nixon. You might know her as Rambo's love interest in Rambo 2. That's right. Who is... The, the Vietnamese lady who gets killed. Right. Um, this wouldn't be that big of a deal, except she's only six years older than Mark DeCosco is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, when I first saw her, I thought it was like, oh, she's just like their sister or something. Well, she starts talking to them, about, and she starts, like, mothering them. And I'm watching this happen, and I'm like, they all look the same age. <laughs> so, I, so I'm starting to think, I'm like, is Julia Nixon just one of those people who's like, you know, 55 and looks amazing. And I looked it up. No, they're all the same age. Like, <laughs> the, 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 like you couldn't get an older lady. Not to mention, Julia Nixon is in this movie for like eight minutes. <laughs> well, let's go back to the, the tournament. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, well, they, you know, it's they're fighting some other, what is it, like a tag team match somehow as well? There's a... Yeah, it, it's ve like, I couldn't even figure out if this was like, they are, there's like trophies and they're on mats like it's a karate match at Tiger Shulman's in the strip mall down the street that you take your six-year-old to. But everybody is yelling and throwing stuff the like we're at the Thunderdome. And, and, yeah. They're treating it like it's the Thunderdome. <laughs> and it's like, well, which one is it? Is this for shits and giggles or are we like killing a man? Well, and then what is it? One of them gets disqualified for choke, like noogieing the guy or something? I don't know what that. Yeah, Scott Wolf does something. They lo Basically, they lose the real match. They get angry, and they get into a real fight. And then, like, to ch scene transition after they run out of this karate tournament, like, something out of a fever dream, the channel changes, as if I am now watching a television, and the nightly news comes on, which is hosted by George Hamilton, Vanna White, with <laughs> and Andy Dick as the weatherman. What the fuck am I watching? And how did they get these people in this movie? Well, it's like it, we're seeing, like, throughout the movie, we see flashes of this fake news. And this is supposed to be played for, like, genuine laughs. Like, the new, every time the news comes on, it's like, here's a brief interlude of just funny they're like, well, Madonna, who just got divorced from Tom Arnold, is moving to Paris. And you're like, did that joke play in 1994? I don't know. I don't think that would have been very funny. I don't. It's, it's certainly not now. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Like, and I guess it, I guess in some like in some level in 1994, the fact that Vanna White and George Hamilton were hosting the news in a dystopian Los Angeles would be enough to make you go at least huh, look at that. That's but like I, now, that's exactly what they did. Yeah, they said and Vanna I'm White it hosting. Now and it's just like. Did I click the next button by accident? Am I watching something different? Well, and well, yeah, Vanna White came up. I went, huh. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. what happened. Look Did at that. She was free. Uh, she was free for an afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, could you come in and do this scene for Double Dragon? You know the story? Don't worry about it. So apparently every night uh, the police completely withdraw from the streets, and it's like the purge every night. Criminals can just do whatever they want, and every single morning the police have to try to – I don't even know what. Like, that's the worst system so, in the world. So how are we different from regular Los Angeles? Oh, topical joke. Woo! So uh, the Double Dragon gang is driving home from the karate tournament in their post-apocalyptic rocket car after, after curfew. They get jumped by a Mad Max-style dystopian gang. So Scott Wolf uses their onboard computer called GangNet to determine that the Mohawk gang's leader is named a Bobo. And in his criminal record, it lists how much he can bench press. <laughs> now, I kind of enjoyed... Why? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> yes, that part is is ridiculous and funny, but I enjoyed that they threw a Bobo into the movie. 
Oh, you're just going to skip over the fact that they are literally in a station wagon that has a rocket engine attached to it. And how is that not cool? <laughs> Very easily. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is it's, ridiculous. It's not, it's not like this is Blade Runner where the cars are flying around and they got lights and there's this mood lighting. It is just the car from the the, 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 uh, the Chevy Chase vacation movie. It's that type of car <laughs> with a rocket engine strapped on the back. And let me tell you, when they get in a, a car chase with these rocket cars, it is the most boring goddamn thing <laughs> I've seen in a long fucking time. I like how they have to feed it, too. They have to put, like, paper. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get it. We'll, we'll get, get to there. it. We'll get there, okay. <laughs> so... Is the like at this point? Is it a sci-fi movie? Is this a post-apocalyptic movie? Is it a karate movie? Is it a gang movie? Because we've been watching it for ten minutes, and all of those things have happened. It's a little cluttered, is what he's trying to. But say. you know what? It isn't mm. double dragon. Yeah, everything but double dragon. <laughs> None of these things in this movie are in double dragon. <sighs> so. The gang surrounds their rocket car and comes up to them and starts harassing them. And then it turns out that all they want is $50. That's the toll. They go, you got to pay us $50. <laughs> Not like, and give they, me your car. Or... And, th- and their reaction should be like, oh, well, that seems reasonable. Here, yeah, <laughs> bye. Yeah, they should be like, oh, we're out after curfew. This gang is uh, encircling us to apparently kill and probably rape us. Oh, all they want is 50 bucks. Quick, give me fifty dollars. They're like, no, screw you, slime head. <laughs> and, and then they uh, hit the gas on their uh, rocket car, which goes from zero to sixty in about a minute and a half. <laughs> I love when they're like, they're like, we're going really fast, and they show the top speeds like seventy two. This car is going so fucking slow. So and you can tell, you can tell during the chase. So uh, before the chase happens, a bobo. See who who is just he's just a tall guy. He looks like he's from Mad Max and he has a mohawk. He sees that Julia Nixon has the other half of the amulet. He doesn't know what it is, but it's gold, so he wants it. Uh, she stabs him in the hand, and then they very slowly merge into traffic <laughs> with this with this rocket car, and a car chase ensues. This car chase is so slow and so stilted. The Double Dragon Boys, like I said, are driving this station wagon, and a Bobo is in, like, a big dump truck. <laughs> so both of them have to make these really wide, slow turns because their cars are as wide as a city block and they can't get any momentum going. The station wagon is powered by a furnace that they have to put paper into. And a Bobo can't look out his window. He is using some sort of... A Matrix Star Wars style targeting computer, which is just he's navigating the street basically through like virtual reality graphics, something. Yeah, and the, 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 he's really bad at it, obviously. <laughs> well, because he just won't look at his fucking window. Well, there's a paper on the top of the window. Yeah, there's a paper in front of his window. He couldn't possibly get that. Well, off. it got slimed before it got, went on there. Like, I don't know if you noticed this, because I know you don't notice a lot of things in movies. Wonderful. <laughs> the the music in this movie is atrocious. Yeah, well, I, the mu- I noticed. The music playing in this scene is some sort of melodic Beastie Boys knockoff that really lulls this scene to sleep in such a way that I was so incredibly bored. It's just like this faint, like... It just that's it, and that is their action music, and it doesn't get any better. <laughs> no, the the movie is just the action. Where they want to have action ends up, like Zach said, puts you to sleep. So both cars crash. They get ready to fight a Bobo, oh, but then what? Didn't did they use the? They, you forgot they used the cheese whiz to get a, to to get away for a moment. Sure, they put cheese whiz in the car, and that like it causes an explosion. Yeah, yep. Glad you brought that up. Well, you know, I want to maybe get some excitement. Sure. All right. Uh, whew, okay, let me wipe the cobwebs <laughs> out of my eyes here. Uh, all right, right, let's keep it going. Moving on. <laughs> so both cars crash. They get ready to fight a Bobo, but then Alyssa Milano shows up, mm-hmm. who's got like this Ellen DeGeneres looking haircut, <laughs> <laughs> and. 
uh, Alyssa Mo- I almost said <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres so, has a gang. <laughs> so <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres, Alyssa Milano's gang called the Power Corps show up and scare a Bobo away. What a stupid fucking name. So, <laughs> like, they're just like, hey, we're the Power Corps. We're the good guys on the streets. And they're like, okay, whatever. See ya next scene. We cut to a movie theater that they all live in. Julia Nixon is now talking to them about the amulet, which was given to her by the Lee brothers' father or something. Uh, and, what race and was this, he? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> He's one of them uh, d- d- Chinese Jewish guys. Yeah. And uh, she, you know, she says it's e- it's evil, it's dangerous or whatever. And uh, she gives the her half of the medallion to Scott Wolf, who is clearly the dumber and worst fighter of the two. So naturally, he should be the w- the one who's given omnipotent power. <laughs> and that's Billy, and, right? That's Billy Lee. Yeah, Scott Wolf is Billy and or Bimmy. <laughs> Bimmy. And, Bimmy, Bimmy and Jimmy, and Mark Dacascos is Jimmy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Robert Patrick finds out from a Bobo about the brothers and says that they got away. So he hooks a Bobo up to some sort of mutant creating machine as punishment for letting them go. We'll come back to that. Don't worry. So we also find out that Alyssa Milano's dad is a cop who hates the power core. And whatever, that's just a subplot in here. That no one cares uh, about. No, but and why does she wear like a ra- like a wig during the day? Because as the power core leader, she has to have her en- her Ellen DeGeneres haircut. But as the chief of police, father, she has to have long brunette hair. Okay, that bothered me to be honest. Oh, it, you know what bothered me? Everything. Okay, so <laughs> so Robert Patrick. So Robert Patrick shows up at the Lee Brothers abandoned movie theater home, wanting the medallion. There's a fight scene. In this fight, it becomes abundantly clear that Mark Dacascos is the only one of the two who can actually do karate. Scott Wolf does a lot of, like, hiding. <laughs> like, Running Mark away. Dacascos, Mark Dacascos is doing a bunch of uncut backflips, leaps off walls, spin kicks, punches, turn around flip-flops. And uh, Scott Wolf will, like, hide under a car and then, like, climb up a ladder. And then trip some with, like, with something as they walk by. <laughs> yeah, he, he does a thing where he has, like, marbles in his hand and, like, throws the Gun marbles. Balls. And then they go, like, whoop, 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 and they fall on their butts because that is the extent of what Scott Wolf can do to fight in this scene. <laughs> Again, the music is terrible. It's this repetitive, graining, generic series of sounds <laughs> that just exi- <laughs> exist. <laughs> so the scenes aren't in complete silence. <laughs> so, so Rambo's girlfriend and Robert Patrick fight. He turns into a cartoon shadow. And then we cut back to Bimmy and Jimmy. And the mutant Abobo shows up. And he looks like a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> he looks like and, something out of a David Cronenberg movie. And not in like a way a way where you're like, oh yeah, Bobo, that's what he would No. He he like not even uh, not even hyperbolically, he is genuinely disturbing. Yes. Yeah. Every time he's in this movie, it's like it's like you're watching some sort of elephant man like movie. He has these like giant fatty tumors on his neck and like a new skeletal structure and like different skin. And he's like, his head is so bulged out. He's just like, (laughs) (laughs) the bulge on his back is what bothers me the most. He's got like this giant like head, the size of a cooler. And he's got like these tiny little hands. He's like, he like you put that character in another movie with like scary music. This is a horror film. You know, it's interesting. He never really fights in the film. No, even when he's a human. Oh, like yeah. and he's and he's in this like there's probably five scenes where he's in this. He doesn't do anything. But they play up the fact that he is now like what did they say? He's as strong as thirty men or yeah, something. But he, he also looks like he's as sick as like thirty cancer patients. Oh, that's terrible. But yeah, you, he never does all, any all the build up and hype, and nothing actually happens. But he like it's played for laughs though. Like oh, he yeah. shows up, he is a scary monster, and Scott Wolf and Mark Costco, Bimmy and Jimmy, do this thing that 
they probably do this like six times in the movie where they like look at something, they pause, they look at each other, and then they scream. I, what is this like? Yeah, like almost like I, a Home Alone scream too. Like ah, yeah, yeah, it's like it's supposed to be like silly, like because every time they do that, then they like they immediately turn around and run away. <laughs> you know, that, it's what like, heroes do. That well, that in itself is not a joke. Like you cannot do that and like that be the joke, especially when in this movie they are in literal danger. You know, in Home Alone, when that happens, it's silly because it's a little kid and he blows up fireworks in his kitchen and blah. He ate ice cream for dinner. Waka waka. waka. <laughs> These two guys are confronted with a drippy, grotesque, deformed human being who is bent on their slaughter. And they scream, rightfully so, and turn and run for fear of their lives. <laughs> this is not a joke. <laughs> I don't know. I, think, I mean, yeah, it's dumb, but it's dumb. So ultimately they defeat him by just pushing him off a stage, and he's so big he can't move. <laughs> they just He takes like three swings at them, and they just push him off stage. He falls down in some nets, and he's like, I can't move because my head's so big. And they're like, <laughs> loser. And then, um, and no, you can, and then there's the great line. He falls in that net, and one of them goes, nothing but net. Oh, there's a lot of those in here. There's a lot of 90s one-liners. Yeah, there's a lot of like somebody will say something and then laugh like oh there's the other one where it's like hey you'll wake up the dead <laughs> like, that's not Jesus funny man fucking Christ. <laughs> shoot me in the goddamn head you, so, you seem to have not liked this way more oh than i didn't God. like it i, I hated this i, I could so, tell holy crap man so robert patrick possesses julia nixon to get the, to to trick scott wolf into giving him or her, the other half of the necklace. So Cynthia Nixon walks up, and she's like, hey, good thing we're all alive. Why don't you give me the necklace? And uh, Mark Dacascos is like, why would you want to do that? And she looks at him and just starts talking with Robert Patrick's voice, like, shut up, you fool, I need the medallion. Like, way to blow your cover. Yeah, like, he probably could have gotten away with it, like, hey, I need this to stop the evil that's coming into the building. Yeah, if you just lied for literally ten more seconds. He would have definitely given it to you. You're, uh, you're inside a lady. <laughs> you look like this lady. Don't use your voice, you <laughs> fucking moron. You boob. <laughs> you boob? So... <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia Nex Nixon, no, Julia Nixon. Who the hell is Cynthia Nixon? I'll look that up. <laughs> Figure that so out. Ju so Julia Nixon gets locked in a cage while she's possessed. Robert Patrick's cartoon pops out of her and then goes like, well, I guess I'm going to light this building on fire and murder this lady. And he does. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> Hence uh, why we said she's in the movie for eight minutes. Yeah, Rambo's wife is now dead. <laughs> and Rambo's uh wife. Girl, Rambo's Vietnamese girlfriend. Oh, and uh, they all get away. Uh, Robert Patrick gets away. Uh, uh, the Bimmy and Jimmy get away, and a Bobo survives the explosion and gets uh, abducted by the Power Core. Something that doesn't make any sense. No. So Bimmy and Jimmy are now under a dock, and they have a heart to heart where they basically argue about whether or not to be upset about the death of their surrogate mother. <laughs> Like, like Scott Wolf is like, don't you care that she's dead? And, and uh, Mark DeCosta goes, goes, she brought this on herself. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and get over it. Wow. <laughs> it's like this lady, first of all, literally died minutes ago. <laughs> you got to... She was she was your mother for all intents and purposes. She was murdered by a ghost or whatever <laughs> and, he is. <laughs> And Mark Tacosco's reaction is, get over it. <laughs> and it's not even like there's like a that's like a point of contention that continues. Th that's dropped. Scott Wolf is upset. Mark Tacosco doesn't give a shit. Next scene, we're moving on. Yeah, I mean, no emotional play into that at all. No, even later on when her ghost shows up, Mark Tacosco isn't like. I can't believe I, like, cursed your name immediately upon your death. I'm sorry. Just act it. Hey, Mom. So. Yeah, or, or not not even. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they're like, well, uh, let's stop arguing and let's go kill Robert Patrick. Okay, they immediately run into another gang who's trying to capture them for Robert Patrick, and karate ensues. 
uh, again, Scott Wolf is terrible at karate. Does they a lot run of running and, and tripping and there's a and they there's punching, kicking stuff, and they punch for a bit, and then they run down to the docks. They get in a speedboat. Then there's a speedboat chase. Then they crash their speedboat and they escape. End of that scene. Oh, that went uh, quick. Something, something, subplot. The gangs are now attacking the police during the day. Oh, why are you going so fast? Who cares? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, in one, so then, in one scene, uh, what's the guy's name? Kagashaga? Uh, Kogashuko? Kugashuko? Kogashuko. Uh, asks his henchmen, who are named Huey and Lewis, he goes, Huey, Lewis, what's the news? Hey, Francis, it's been a while since I've said this one. Did you fucking get it? <laughs> do you get it, man? I, I actually Huey do. Lewis. I got it. Yep. <laughs> Oh, you got this one? This one's good. <laughs> so uh, they're just like, oh, we're still looking for the medallion. And he's like, oh, I'm angry. And then he turns into a cartoon again. Well, I, n- I don't understand, like, the whole, like, what's his power? He just possesses people? or He can move through things? I mean, <laughs> he se- I mean, he seems to be more powerful with this half of the medallion than he is later when he has both halves. And he does nothing, really. No, I mean, in this one, he can possess people, he can literally attack your shadow, and it harms your corporeal self, and he can be, like, omnipresent at points. I don't even know, like, what does he even need the other thing for? <sighs> he should just be like, he should be like, you know what, this one's working out pretty well. What, where so, in the plot did we get to now? You went like, boom, 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 here we go. Uh, so, Bimmy and Jimmy decide that they need Alyssa Milano's help to stop K- Kagashaga. Right. Kogoshuko? Kogoshuko? <laughs> okay. So, th- so we cut to the Power Corps headquarters, where Alyssa Milano is force-feeding a Bobo spinach through a funnel. And, <laughs> I, like, I almost threw up in my fucking mouth. Was it that bad like, for you? <laughs> It, he is so disturbing looking. Like he looks like his his head looks like an ass, and his face is where like the asshole would be. He looks like a walking, talking asshole. And now he's got like drippy spinach coming out of his mouth. He looks like a poopy asshole. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of can't stop, man. You can't do this. <laughs> okay. All right. Dripping poopy asshole. Go for it. He looks like a drippy poopy asshole. <laughs> Jeez. Disgusting. But the scene supports what I'm talking, because while she's force-feeding him spinach, he just sits there and farts loudly. She's just like, well, if you're not going to answer my questions, you're going to have to eat more spinach. Cut to a bobo. Plop! It's gross. And again, he is played for jokes. A bobo is supposed to be silly, but he is like a nightmare man. (laughs) And he's supposed to be a serious contender against the Double Dragon Brothers, too. Yeah, but he'd never fight. Right. He fights them once. He just gets tripped, and that's the end. Mm-hmm. So Bimmy and Jimmy enter the Power Corps hideout in a very comical way where they fall down a slide, and they look at each other, and they scream again. Ah. The Power Corps headquarters is like a brightly lit fluorescent colored version of the Foot Clan hideout. I was from just going to say Turtles. that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Foot Clan hideout from the 90s Ninja Turtles movie, but it's brighter and it's it's much more 90s and it's much more fun. Yeah. Well, even though there's no kids skateboarding and smoking cigarettes. Yeah. They, there is an arcade. I saw the arcade. There there is an arcade. Well, it's the 90s. There had to be one. Always. So, uh they're like, okay, we'll agree to help you and get into Robert Patrick's headquarters. So the Power Corps cause a 90s-style distraction in the lobby of Robert Patrick's building where they, like, skateboard around and, like, have boom boxes and, like, eat <laughs> I don't even remember pe- this. Oh, yeah, they're like, <laughs> it's a bunch of kids, and there's, like, a frou-frou lobby security guard who's like, my building is very fancy, and we have an indoor fountain, and kids <laughs> come in and go, rah! Cool. And they eat, like, pizza bagels, and I'm sure there's, like, cartoon cat wearing sunglasses. It must have been those but, uh, those fruit juice, the juicy fruit, uh, like, uh, yeah, gummy things. Gushers, you eat. Yeah, their heads were turning into fruits. What's another 90s thing? Uh, they were all on skippets and moon shoes. 
Shoes. <laughs> wow. Uh, skip so, it. <laughs> skip it. Skip it. it. Look, it has a counter now. Okay, let's go. <laughs> You know what? Just for the fuck of it, here's that theme song. Now kids come get around. See what just skipped in the town. So skip it, skip it. Do run, do jump, do hop, hop. Skip it, skip it. Skipping and a screaming and a bop, bop, bop. So on the roof, Bimmy and Jimmy and Alyssa Milano are going to sneak into a vent. Uh, Bimmy and Jimmy just look at Alyssa Milano's ass. And I mean, they look at her ass. And then they fight Aly- to try to see who can go the first behind her. Yeah, to, like, put their nose in her butthole, because, like, for, like, five seconds, the screen is just Alyssa Milano's ass cheeks. They crawl through the vent, they find Robert Patrick's office, who is trying to make a deal with Alyssa Milano's dad, who's the chief of police. They get caught, they fall through the vent, Alyssa Alyssa Milano's dad fights a ninja lady, Bimmy and Jimmy and Alyssa Milano fall down a chute, to, to where the laboratory was that a bobo turned into a walking nightmare man. <laughs> uh, they find out that this is another loose thread that's never explained. Apparently, Robert Patrick is kidnapping people, putting them into comas, and then turning them into mutants. Yeah, they don't really expand on that. but I'm... That's never addressed. So they're down there looking at all these dead bodies, and then fucking Robert Patrick... Uh, like possesses Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or some shit <laughs> because it's like a seven, seven and a half tall, yeah. tall uh, 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 basketball player in a basketball jersey. Why is it such a large man? <laughs> Why is it not only such a large man, it is unmistakably a basketball player because he is wearing the uniform of a basketball player. Maybe that was one of the enemies from the game or something. Who knows? Was it? Maybe. Did you fight guys who were taller than the screen no, of the arcade? Probably not, no. Uh, so, yeah, and then doesn't Shokabuku show up at this point? Well, Shokabuku is is the is possessing the corpse. Yeah, I know, but after that. Well, he's already there. Oh. He's in the corpse. What do you mean after that? Oh, I meant at, like she actually show up in person. Well, I don't know. You're asking me, you're telling me. I asked you. <laughs> yes, he does. Okay, good. Then we've solved that problem. And then what happens? Um. Hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see. He steals <laughs> one of the medallion pieces. Uh, le- uh, no. Okay. Maybe I got a little ahead. Uh, just guess again. <laughs> there was a fight. <laughs> do, do you. Do, do you just. Like, think, maybe if I don't watch this, I'll get away with it. I did watch it. Then what happened? This part I just forgot. Isn't it a coincidence that every time I'll say, what happens next, you always happen to forget just that part? I'm going through some things right now. (laughs) So. So, they fight his shadow, he possesses another mutant, then they, like, press some sort of, like, shut down the facility button... Something or like self destruct this building, and a door is closing. Uh, uh, Scott Wolf and Alyssa Milano get trapped behind a door, and Mark Dacascos gets stuck there alongside Robert Patrick. Uh, Bimmy and Alyssa Milano escape. Uh, subplot: the police thing. The police are now going out to try to stop the gangs in the daylight. That that thing is clearly wrapping up with a bow on it. Yes. Uh, Mark Dacascos is being interrogated by Robert Patrick to get the medallion. That goes nowhere. The gangs in, then cut to the Power Core headquarters, where now the Sh- Shakataka's gang invades the Power Core Super 90s headquarters, and Bimmy and Alyssa Milano have to fight these comical bad guys who are dressed like mailmen. <laughs> like, why, why, why were so many of them dressed like mailmen? It must have been an enemy in the game. Or did... You, I guarantee you that's not why. <laughs> I guarantee you that's not what happened. Nothing else in this movie is from the game. A few things. Well, other than the names. Um. Yeah, not not really. Okay, so no. Yeah. <laughs> so they're fighting these gangs. Meanwhile, while we're having the final climactic fight, a Bobo is locked in a bathroom, and he's looking at himself in the mirror. 
he realizes that he has been turned into a hideously grotesque monster, has an existential crisis, and starts to cry. <laughs> what the fuck is this weird Cronenbergian elephant man motherfucker inner search for my humanity part doing in this silly video game kar- karate and, movie? And where, how did he not know he looked different? <laughs> yeah, and it's... I mean, and why, seriously, everything else aside, joking and jocularity put aside for a second, why do we have to watch this man have his soul crushed when he realizes he looks like a butthole? (laughs) He starts, he literally starts to cry. Well, you know, I mean. It's like heartbreaking. I I didn't (laughs) feel anything. (laughs) Well, I'm a soulless monster, so I didn't feel anything. I don't know. I didn't care about the movie, therefore did not care about a Bobo. Well, I didn't care about him either, but it's definitely jarring. Mm. It's not like, yeah, sure, obviously. I had no genuine feeling of pity for this man. But to go from a wacky 90s like, hey, <laughs> what, have a nice trip. See you next fall. He throws a bowling ball, and then you hear like the pin <laughs> clashing sound. He goes, ha <laughs> strike. Mm. And then you see a man weeping into an image of him former self <laughs> while he's in a dingy room and goes like, I'm not an animal. Those two things do not mesh. But he can Meanwhile, I'm on my moon shoes and I can do a crazy spin <laughs> kick. <laughs> Eat my shorts, Coco Boco, or whatever. He gets, and then he gets out. He was like chained to the wall in the bathroom too, wasn't he? Or whatever. He gets out. So, so uh, Scott Wolf. Is is fighting, and then Mark DeCosco shows up, and he's like, oh, my brother Jimmy is here. Oh, no, you're possessed by Robert Patrick. So Mark DeCosco's with Robert Patrick's voice is kicking the shit out of Scott Wolf, as I would imagine would happen in real life if those two got to fight. <laughs> oh, this is, oh, yeah, okay, yep. This is what? It, yep, no, I just remember that part, yep. You just remember? <laughs> Is this podcast just you going, oh, I remember that. I have, I've been trying to pin input, but you've been so great on this one. Oh, I fucking I know, this. I can tell so, because I haven't been able to get a word in edgewise. Oh, well, please, say something. Oh, now it's all the stuff I wanted to say you fast. Oh, well, say something about this fight. Uh, okay, well, then Billy an- ac- somehow accidentally activates his medallion's ability. But does he, though? Eh. Because he's fighting Mark Dacosta, right. right? He's losing. Badly. He's been trying <laughs> badly. He's been trying to get this medallion to do something the whole Rubbing movie, right? it and holding it and praying to and it. Just saying magic, we are. So he's losing this fight, and he takes off the medallion and goes, this thing doesn't work. He throws it away. It stops in midair, glows for a second, shoots back to his hand. He's like, ugh. Like, he becomes a little bit cartoon lighted for a sec, puts it back on. Then he still continues to lose the fight for a while. He's not, he can't turn into a shadow. He can't fly. He's not better at karate. He just lands a couple of quick punches, knocks the ghost out of Mark Dacascos, and then the medallion falls off his neck. Yeah, but he's impervious to pain, right, at that point? Is that's he? I, I didn't get that. That's what that. I got out of it, yeah. I, when, when the medallion came back to him, like I was just like, he's not doing anything different. His punches are just landing well, now. That he a- doesn't appear to be any... Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. Well, what? there's a whole part where he saves his brother, right? That was right after that, where he, he the, he's going to drop, like, he's like, I'm going to drop this big heavy bag on your brother, and he, like, runs over and he, like, takes the hit. Oh, I must have skipped that oh, part. Oh, okay. Oh, there. Ha, back at you. All right. <laughs> oh, you got me. <laughs> so th- what we just said happens. Uh, Scott Wolf loses his half of the medallion. Now Robert Patrick has both halves. He puts them together, and then he turns into, like, a little troll man. Two, who, yeah, he turns into two shadow warriors. He, but they're, like, monster right. people. So he turns into two monsters who have swords. So now Bimmy and Jimmy have to fight these two guys. Mm-hmm. And all, they're, all they are are just, like, good guys with swords. Like, they're just ninjas. Right, and then like, the only week we find out from a Bobo that their only weakness is light. Something that happens literally half the day on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, this is, this is like what happened at the end of Masters of the Universe, where Skeletor and Robert Patrick become omnipresent, all-knowing, omnipotent gods, 
And when they finally have, quote-unquote, the power, the power ultimately is like, so you just are what now? Like, you're a good sword fighter and you've turned into a monster? Like he, It's the same thing from the Masters of the Universe. Like I said, once they... He keeps talking, like, once I get these medallions together, I will control this city. Like, unequivocally, nobody will be able to question me. Right. He gets it, and two fucking kids beat him because they turned the light switch on. <laughs> That's what happens. Yep. Alyssa Mil- uh, Bobo says, turn the light on. <laughs> Alyssa Milano turns the light on. They go, ooh, it's real bright in here. Ah, my eyes. They go up and just kick him. <laughs> he turns back into Robert Patrick. The medallions land in their hands. They hold it up like they're posing for, I don't know, a freeze frame on a cereal box. They push them together. Now they're wearing the stupidest looking uniforms from the video game. (laughs) For five seconds, uh, what's her name? Julia Nixon's head pops up and goes like, hey, uh, you guys are uh, ninjas now. Except for for Bimmy. He can't. He's still terrible. (laughs) Except for Bimmy. You guys are magic ninjas now. See ya. And she disappears. And then they, you know, they beat up Robert Patrick a couple more times. Then the police show up and arrest him. Now that they beat him up, a Bobo, Bimmy, Jimmy, and Alyssa Milano get into their rocket car and drive away. (laughs) That's pretty much it. The end. What was this? (laughs) What (laughs) was... What happened? That was a very long explanation of this film. Oh, it was like... It, I... <laughs> it, like, I'm gonna... You can talk when I'm done, because I'm gonna go now. I hated this. I hated it. With such a bleeding passion. And it wasn't even like, when anybody talks about Super Mario Brothers, or any video game movie, how it's like, oh, it's so... It's nothing like the game, and it doesn't encapsulate, like, what people enjoy about the story of that game. It's like, I don't even know what this was. Like I said, was it a karate movie? Was it like a magic mystical movie? Is it a dystopian movie? Is it a post-apocalyptic movie? Is it a tongue-in-cheek comedy? It's a Cronenberg film for four minutes when a Bobo shows up. Like, it's all over the place. It's like, and out of all of those things that it kind of is, it's never a Double Dragons movie, ever. <laughs> it's terrible. Is that all? I'm all right. done. Well, I as well hated the movie, but not with such a passion that Reverend here, Zach, did. Um, I was more disappointed with it. I wanted it to be uh, a lot more like the video game. Did you feel like a parent? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I did. You know, being such an NES fan as I am, I love the Double Dragon game, and this just... Again, didn't even come close, or at all, uh, for that matter. Um, yeah. Well, I, I I feel like there's a difference between missing the mark and like dramatically yes. overshooting it, because they could have gone, they could have, they could have missed the mark in the sense where it was really low key and it was two guys fighting people on the streets, but nothing happened, so it was boring. Mm. They went the completely opposite route, though, and had so much happen that it was bonkers. Well, um, other than that, I did doze off a few times during this one, especially during the action scenes, uh, which definitely was not really what's supposed to happen, I don't think. Um, yeah, it's just a bad movie. There's, no, I mean, I guess uh, Reverend Zach had so much to say about it. <laughs> that. I, it was hard I for mean, me like, to get it, a lot of my views at the time in on it, but I pretty much agree with him on almost everything. Uh, well, I, I mean, out of all of the movies we've watched for this show, like, even at its worst, even when we've watched ones that, like, we genuinely hated, like, I could get through them, maybe they were a little rough, like, I, I did not want to watch this. Like, I, I, I could, I, I was, like, angry every second because every time something was happening i was like what are we doing right now yeah (laughs) well i think that's i I don't have anything else to say about the movie neither do i uh do you have any suggest do you have anything obviously we don't recommend (laughs) neither of us recommend this (laughs) so do you have anything you would like to oh i don't know uh any other you know ninja movie (laughs) Just oh, go play Double or Dragon. Or go watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, there we go. 
Good one. So and the secret of the ooze. I love that one. I a know a little I'm in bit. The a little. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So I love the secret. I don't of the know ooze. why, but whatever. I don't. I grew up with it. I, I love I, it. The first one's better. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, but the second one's cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's it. So go ahead and do your <laughs> whole right. like. Uh, Oh, stuff. yeah, I got a bunch of other stuff to yeah. say. So, stalling. <clears throat> if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or hate mail, we certainly love hate mail. You can send us that at moviehotdog at gmail.com. We have a Twitter you can follow us on, at moviehotdog. Uh, we have a Facebook. You can like us, send us comments or messages. We can get uh, questions from you guys there, too. It's at this movie was a hot dog. If you get this from Podomatic or iTunes, please rate and review, subscribe, as it helps the show. I'm done, Francis. Yes? Uh, do, do your thing oh. now. Say the well, thing you said. for Reverend Zach, this is Francis saying this movie was a hot dog. Mm-hmm.